Hi, I'm going to introduce you to our lab calculating the length of a carbon-carbon bond. Um, first, just a little background on the big overall picture of what we're going to do. Uh, we are starting with a few different acids and one of them that I'll focus on in this pre-lab discussion is lauric acid. Here is the structure for lauric acid. Every little um, time these two lines intersect or even the point on the end, these are carbon atoms here and you can see it's all carbon atoms with hydrogens except until you get to one end where there's a double bond to an oxygen and then an OH group right there. So what this means is we've got a hydrophobic end or an end that does not like water and a hydrophilic end. In this lab we're going to have a big petri dish that we fill with water. Here's my water and we're going to take a very calculated 10 microliter drop of the lauric acid and we're going to add it to the water. And what's going to happen is a little bit like what happened in our nail polish experiment where we added the one drop of nail polish to the water and it just spread right out. Or another way you could think about this is if you had a big bucket of water and you threw it onto an ice rink and it would spread out. Well, what we're hoping to do and what we're going to assume is that when we do this, this lauric acid drop will spread completely out so that we've got a monolayer or one molecule um, thick that spreads across the water. So the end that loves water will be uh, most attracted to the, side, the water side. So then what we're going to have is this chain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and I didn't draw this part because we'll just make an assumption that that's interacting with the water right here. Mm -hmm. So we've got 12 carbons, 11 carbon-carbon bonds stacked high. And we'll have a bunch of these all hanging out together Okay, so we've got this hydrophobic surface now. If we know the entire volume of the drop of the lauric acid, and if we know the area of space that it takes up, which I'll show you how we can do that in a second here, we're going to be able to calculate the height of this entire layer. Okay, because if we know the volume of the drop, and we know the area of the space, that the acid takes up, what we're going to have is centimeters cubed divided by centimeters squared, which is the height in centimeters. Now, if we know the height of the entire monolayer and we know there are, for example, 11 carbon carbon bonds, we will in fact be able to calculate the length of a single carbon carbon bond, which is less than a nanometer. And one of the um, techniques that they're using a lot in nanotechnology is they're synthesizing these very thin nanometer, less than a nanometer thick um, films and they'll do something like this where they've got two surfaces that really like each other and they'll have a chain of something um, of whatever they're interested in uh, making attached to that. So let's go through some of these calculations and how you're going to figure this out. Um, first big overall picture of the procedure is that you're going to have this petri dish, like I said, it's a really giant petri dish. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take some acetate paper, which is the same as transparency paper, and you're going to put a petri dish over it and you're going to trace out three different circles and cut them out. You're also going to take the mass of these pieces of acetate paper and you'll see why in a second. Then what you're going to be doing is you're going to fill the petri dish about halfway with water and sprinkle lycopodium powder on top. And that's just so that when this spreading action happens, when we add the lauric acid, we'll be able to see how far it spreads out because it's going to push that lycopodium powder out of the way. So you're going to have a micro pipette and basically what, how these work is you push your thumb down until it stops once, insert it into the solution. So in our case, lauric acid. Let your thumb release. You'll have 10 microliters inside the little tip. You'll put it over your surface and you want the surface almost touching the lycopodium powder and then you'll push down all the way past that first click to release your lauric acid. Okay, then you're going to see it spread that lycopodium powder and you're going to take a lid, put it on top of your petri dish and you'll put your acetate paper over the top and you'll trace the shape that the um, lauric acid made. And then you'll cut out that new shape and you'll take the mass of that spot and we're going to do something with that. So let's take you through some example calculations. So first of all, 
the molar mass, you could just Google this, of lauric acid is 200.3 grams per mole. The concentration of the lauric acid that I made for the lab is 0 0.005 grams per milliliter. The volume of the drop we went over is 10 microliters, or in other words, 0 0.01 milliliters. So if we want to know the mass of the acid, we can do a simple calculation of taking the concentration times the volume, 0 0.005 grams per milliliter times 0 0.01 milliliters. We're talking 0 0.00005 grams of acid that we're adding. How many moles is that? Take your mass divided by your molecular weight, back to your chemistry days, 2.5 times 10 to the minus 7th moles. Just for fun, how many molecules of acid are we adding? Take moles multiplied by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. We are adding 1.5 times 10 to the 17th molecules of lauric acid. Okay, so just a little bit. And then like I said before, you're going to need the mass of the plate-shaped acetate, which I calculated to be approximately 2.21 grams the mass of the spot shaped, so again, after you've cut out that little spot, should be less because of that spreading action that happened. So that would be, in my experiment, it was about 0.82 grams. Okay, then you'll need the radius of the original plate. I calculated that to be about seven centimeters, which means the area of the um, circular surface, pi r squared, would come out to be 153.86 centimeters cubed, squared. If we want to know the area of that spot, okay, we can do a little proportion set up here. The mass of the entire circle was 2.21 grams, and that was when the area was 153.86 centimeters cubed, uh, squared. So what would the area of that misshapen spot be if its mass was 0.82 grams. So this is our x. So you can do some cross multiplication and division. So 153.86 times 0.82 divided by 2.21, and we can get the area of that spot, which I calculate to be about 57.1 centimeters squared. Now the density of the acid is something else that you can Google and it's given to you, 0 0.880 grams per milliliter. We're going to need that because we need to figure out the whole volume of that, um, so the 3D volume of that acid. So in order to do that, mass divided by density, take our mass, 0 0.00005 divided by the density, we're talking about a volume of 5.7 times 10 to the minus fifth, and um, in milliliters, one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cubed, so that's the same in centimeters cubed. Now we can calculate the thickness of the layer. We know the volume of that entire drop is 5.7 times 10 to the minus fifth centimeters cubed. We know the area is 57.1 centimeters squared. Volume divided by area, we now know the height of that monolayer, which is, in my calculation, 9.98 times 10 to the minus 7 centimeters. Okay, and we talked about how in lauric acid there are 12 carbon atoms, which means there are 11 carbon-carbon bonds. So now we can take the thickness divided by the number of carbon-carbon bonds, and we can get our estimation for the length of a carbon-carbon bond, which I get to be 9.1 times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Now the actual length, which is given to you, is 1.54 times 10 to the minus 8. And if I'm going to convert that into nanometers, that's 0.154 nanometers. So I got with my calculation 0.91. Again, we're making some assumptions in this lab that nothing got stacked up or maybe the, molecule, you know, the molecules didn't spread out too much. 
Um, we're also making an assumption that these carbon-carbon bonds are perfectly vertical, which they're not, so there's some problems there. Um, but it's pretty good, and it's pretty amazing that we can do a calculation on the nanoscale. So good luck. Takes a little while to really understand everything that's going on with this lab, um, but you will. Maybe you'll have to watch the video like 10 times. Just kidding.